Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Previously on My Restaurant in India, Sarah arrives in Goa expecting the restaurant to be ready for menu testing. I miss this place. <laughs> but instead finds it under heavy construction. Every direction you look, there's something going on here. Let's make a list and just delegate people. Missing deadlines has become the norm. A visit to Goa's largest seafood supplier leaves Sarah feeling cold. How much fresh fish can we get? You know, that comes like straight off the boat. The industry in Goa is not massive. We'll have to find those fresh fish yeah. guys who go to Mapsa. Yeah. And Sarah discovers that training her new kitchen team may be more difficult than she thought. Everyone speaks English, right? Speak English? Speak English? Not at all. Not at all. Oh my God, how am I going to get through this? <laughs> A thousand litres of water has just fallen onto our generator. That's our power. So now we don't have water or electricity. And my stomach is doing flips, and it's hard for me to comprehend the fact that I'll be opening in eight days. <laughs> it's like a 10,000 piece jigsaw. <laughs> we knocked out some pretty good pizzas, and it was kind of a success. Yeah. <laughs> it just feels like we're cracking open and getting started. After the disappointment of finding only frozen seafood at Goa's larger produce suppliers, today, Sarah has come straight to the source to see what fresh seafood might be on offer. It's 6am and Shika, a young Indian entrepreneur and a partner in the restaurant, has brought Sarah down to the local fishing docks. So I've been to some wholesalers and so far I've only seen frozen seafood and that's definitely not what I want to be serving in the restaurant. We're here in Goa, there's water all around us and I'd love to serve fresh seafood and make use of that. So I've asked Shika to take me down to the ocean and see if we can find some seafood on the side. But actually we're a bit early I think or maybe they're going out a little bit later today. So usually there's all the seafood down here on the dock. Let's go talk to the fishermen. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, you can go on the boat. You can see which one is. Yeah, which one is. What do you say? Okay. Let's go on the boat. You're talking to me in Hindi. Sorry, it's Hindi. I'll take you on the boat and I'll show you what type of fish I catch. I'm wearing a dress. It doesn't matter. Come on, it's going to be fun. Oh, okay. Let's, Let's do go. it. <laughs> The large fishing trawlers don't operate out of Goa, so Sarah is keen to see what sort of catch a small trawler like this might offer her restaurant menu. The fishing nets are cast out into the sea for one hour. While they wait, the fishermen cook breakfast. Fishermen use fresh sole fish. It's marinated in spices, crumbed with semolina flour and deep fried. 
Looks mm. yum. It smells really good. Oh, it looks so good. Yeah, so peel it off. Oh my god. That's good. So fresh. It's crispy. Just a little bit of chili. The quality of the fish reassures Sarah that she'll be able to find good, fresh produce for her restaurant. She'll just have to search a little harder to unearth these small local suppliers. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a pig. If he lets me, I'll eat it all. <laughs> They're too good. The chicken's got a bit of seasickness. Stay strong up there. He hasn't asked us to go home yet. So do you think we might get a lot today or just a little bit? Like a lot. It's much coming, but like it is different, different type. You have to bring here and take all out. The, all the fish goes here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that. <laughs> it's gonna get the same amount as last time, this much. <laughs> so let's see. only five minutes from the restaurant so imagine that straight off the boat onto the tables that's why I love India the catch includes a beautiful local fish called pomfret as well as fresh prawns and crab there'll be no more frozen seafood for Sarah's restaurant I came down here this morning to see what fish was available locally and then all of a sudden we're shipped onto a boat and we're out trawling and going to catch our own fish This is making my decision to move to Goa for half the year every year a lot more pleasurable. So, you know, it makes it feel like it's worth it. Thank you for taking me. That was awesome. It was a really nice experience. It's only days until the restaurant launch and the build continues to slip further behind. But the kitchen is finally up and running and menu testing is in full flight. Head chef Arindam is working with Sarah to incorporate local ingredients into her contemporary Australian menu. This is the first time working in India. She's serving quality food with simple stuff. The Indians, they like to eat gravy, lots of gravy, lots of sauce. And this is a team who's showing who, who is Shara. And that's our job to bring her up. For me, it's all about kind of taking local influences, but still trying to stay true to the dishes that I love cooking. So, Rindam, I just went fishing on a fishing trawler with Shika, and we caught some pom frites. So I wanted to kind of play around with the fish and, you know, try and incorporate it into the menu. What I'm thinking is to do a lentil dish, you know, in India, People love eating lentils, right? It's something they're very familiar with. But I want to use French lentils today, so pie lentils. And pommes frites are pretty widely available, right? So pommes frites are good fish to use. It's not too expensive. Not too expensive and yeah. very easy to cook. Yeah. My biggest challenge is to find a happy medium where I'm staying true to myself and the dishes that I love cooking, but also catering for the local market. Because at the end of the day, palettes are different here. I want to make the customers happy but at the same time bring something slightly different that you know, I can show a taste of Australia, you know, a taste of an, in, an international restaurant and hopefully the customers enjoy it. So, I wanted to say thank you for taking me out on the boat and yes, made you some food. it was amazing, it was a great experience. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and we actually caught some fish. Yes. So fresh, 
Nice. Yes, it's amazing. You like it? Yes. This should go on the menu for sure. So do you think the Indian market will like it? They will love it. Yeah. It's really nice. had big struggles getting in some produce. Now we're starting to solidify our supply chain and get in as many good quality producers as possible. So I think the menu is just going to keep adapting as we go along. It all smells super fresh. It's great. Massive. That could be for a main dish. Like, they're huge, yeah. They're huge. Got some beautiful squid here. Great size. We'll absolutely have calamari on the menu because you just have to when you're near the beach. <laughs> and lots of mussels. So mussels, clams, pippies is one of the easiest um, types of seafood to get in here in Goa. So um, I'll be using all of the above. So excited to try these out and make sure they're all tasting great. And yeah, I guess the biggest issue now is just making sure that we can have a consistent supply every day. So let's see how it goes. Is the, um, Pankaj, is the fridge on? Yeah, it's on. It's on downstairs. Yeah. I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, thanks. Inspired by Sarah's star sign, the team have decided to call the restaurant Antares, the brightest star in the Scorpius constellation. The pieces for the Antares sign have arrived as the official unveiling draws ever nearer. Okay. Meanwhile, Sarah gathers her team for a night of drinks testing. <laughs> we all went to start at 5 o'clock and we're kind of running on Indian time tonight. 6.15 now and we're just about to start. <laughs> Ice has arrived, liquor's here. It's time to get testing. Antares features a large timber bar in the heart of the restaurant. The bar will need to serve up to 400 thirsty customers once the restaurant is in full flight. So a seamless drink service is going to be crucial. I'm just going to make an espresso martini. That's where we're going to start. So. It's a good place to start, Nathan. <laughs> Sarah's close friend, Sophie, has relocated from Australia to work as the front of house manager. Sophie's boyfriend, Nathan, made a last minute decision to join them. As he is the only one with bar experience, Nathan will be managing this very busy bar. <laughs> First drink in the restaurant, yay! Yum. Finding local bar staff this close to peak season has been a major challenge. Nathan only has a few days to train up an inexperienced Indian bar team and teach them the finer points of mixing cocktails. Tonight was about getting everyone pumped get everyone into this spirit, like, this is happening. This is going to be a restaurant really soon. It's got a kick, huh? <laughs> it's got a kick. With only seven days until Antares opens, there's still a lot to be done to whip this restaurant into shape. Sarah is shocked by the large amounts of trash that are still being dumped around the work site. Hi, Shish. I'm trying to, trying to get stuff happening in here, but there's like crap everywhere. All the building stuff, like every corner, there's rubbish. I've just set up my dry store. There's no door in there. Like, I, if we're going to be open in seven days, I was like, I need to be able to function. With a shish away, Sarah will have to take charge if she wants to get the work site in order. Can we just get this area cleaned up as well? Put all, tell someone to put all the boxes somewhere neatly. Guys, can I get a couple of you just to clear up all this area and move it out of the way? Move all of these boxes out. Arindam, can I get two guys just to come here?
everything just so we can actually move through here. Quickly. Faster. A bit frustrated. Just need everyone to start moving quickly and get things done. It's not in my nature at all to, you know, be hounding people, but sometimes that's what needs to be done, I guess, in India. So I just have to learn to be a little bit more like that. We're meant to be opening in seven days now, so walkways need to be clear. We need to be able to access the kitchen, the bar, just <laughs> make it feel like a kitchen again. This is our hot wash at the moment. <laughs> Um, yeah, we're definitely camping. Not even glamping, we're just camping <laughs> right now. <laughs> Over $5,000 of new pots, pans, utensils and tableware have been delivered. But Sarah has nowhere to store them securely. Can we get a door on the um, pot wash room today as well? A door on the pot wash room. Okay. Can we get a door today? Um, if I... A door, washroom and kitchen. Can I, I want to set up all my pots and pans somewhere. Six, seven, I want to set the pots and pans uh, somewhere so that it's easy to access. Okay, okay, okay. Ceiling fan. Ceiling fan. Uh, no, 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 just doors. Just lock, door. lock doors so I can set everything up, all of the equipment. Sarah can't afford to wait for the installation of doors and shelves, so she decides to forge on with unpacking her kitchen equipment. It's amazing. Good morning. Good morning. It looks awesome. <laughs> we finally have a name. Yes. <laughs> Sarah's excitement about the new sign is soon crushed as she receives a phone call with news of yet another setback. Or even all the vegetables. It was out all night. I can't open this Saturday. It's not going to happen. Oh, it's so <laughs> I don't want to cry. The power went out last night and everything spoiled. Everything in the cold room, all the meats, the vegetables, everything. Power was out all night. So it's like, I'm so excited because my sign's here, but I'm so frustrated right now. It's all bad. It's all gone off. Oh. 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 Oh, <laughs> oh it's so bad. It's all gone green. I have to just get rid of it. Oh. What are we going to do? No, I already spoiled 12,000. 12,000 what? Rupees. 12,000 rupees. Yeah, because the lamb shoulder, pork yeah. shoulder, uh, lamb means, mutton, uh, deep means, oh. salmon. The whole night, there is no power. And this is too much, more than too much is spoiled. What's that? This chicken and everything we ordered. For okay. One amazing thing happens, then one bad thing happens. So it's like, forward, back, forward, back. <laughs> it's crazy. India, why? The fridge went off last night, and all the food's gone off, everything. Everything's gone off. 20,000 rupees of protein and all gone. Well, we can't cook, and that was my main plan for today. But I'm, I mean, I have to do um, all my menu costings and start that. 
So I'm guessing I might just give everyone the prep list to get familiar with and recipes and I think I'm just going to have to work and get the other things ready. Oh. <laughs> They're still not taking the first as seriously as... Yeah. Yeah. No, there's no way, because I can't do all of this in six days. I don't think there's a choice. I mean, we're, what, two months late. We've run out of money. So there is no question. We've, you know, we've got to open. Desperate for a solution, Sarah hopes Shika can use his local contacts to get the power and water up and running. What do you mean, what's the problem? Everything's gone off. All of my produce went off. We are going to be open in six days and I haven't got a cold room, I haven't got a kitchen, I haven't got water, I haven't got electricity. So who loses out? It's my reputation. So, you know, it sucks actually. <laughs> Sarah is forced to leave the chaos of the restaurant and head to the airport to pick up her five-year-old son, Phoenix. It's been over five weeks since she has seen him. Being away from Phoenix is definitely the hardest part about this whole process and yeah, I'm just looking forward to having him back in my arms and make it all feel okay again. Do you know how, um, what time the Kuala Lumpur flight's coming in? Is it on time? 8.30. 8.30? Oh, it's 9 now. I feel a little bit nervous actually because it's a long time to be away from him and yeah, I hope he still loves me. <laughs> the plane's landed, I think. They said hopefully. <laughs> so it's not long now. <laughs> He's nearly here. A little bit nervous. Lots of people have come out already. I was the first here <laughs> waiting for him. I think he should be coming out soon. <laughs> Did you come from Kuala Lumpur? I've been waiting nearly an hour and a half now. Up oh, there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 2.30 a.m. Australian time, and after almost 20 hours of travel, Phoenix can barely keep his eyes open. So beautiful. <laughs> Phoenix will stay with Sarah for the next week. It's a crucial time for the restaurant, with the launch less than a week away. Balancing her time is going to be a challenge, but for now, Sarah is just happy to have her son by her side. Thank you. Come here, baby. Thanks very much, thank you. time on my restaurant in India. Yeah, it's massive tension between the two things that I love the most, my restaurant and Phoenix. Can someone please take this rubbish away? The cracks start to show as the pressure takes its toll on the Aussie staff. Can we work out how to get this problem solved? Right? A new water tank and a large delivery brings excitement to the restaurant. <laughs> There's so much good stuff. The kitchen is finally up and running, but Sarah's confidence takes a hit after the Indian staff find her food bland. Oh my God, what have I done? What am I doing? 